Well, my uh, clock says it is six o'clock, guys. Um, so uh, one thing that we will do is we will have this on recording for you to look back on if you missed anything, if your connection goes out. Um, so we'll put this on our YouTube channel as well. And then also uh, right now what you should have in front of you is a pen and sheets of paper. Thank you, Owen. Anyone else have their pen, sheets of paper? Want to put them up for me? Great, great. And what you're gonna be taking notes on is everything on this screen, okay? Um, and so I just uh, wanted to start out with prayer. Uh, why don't we ask God to be with us as we've uh, met here for Access class? Uh, so we pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that right now you're reigning above all things. Uh, you're in control and this for the sake of the church. Lord, I thank you for uh, our access class that gets to meet in a different way, but still meet together. And I thank you that we have your word um, that tells us of your love and your grace towards us. Um, I ask that you would uh, bless us through this word, uh, that it'd be beneficial, uh, that you would leverage technology for our good so that we could learn more about your grace uh, through baptism. So Lord, uh, bless us and be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So with that, um, our topic for today is baptism. And um, uh, raise your hand if you have been baptized. Okay. Uh, many of us, uh, this uh, happened even before we could remember it. Um, for me, I got baptized in a YMCA. And this is where our, our church was meeting. Um, my dad was a pastor and we didn't have a church facility. Um, so we're meeting in a YMCA, and uh, I got baptized as an infant on Easter in 1982. I'm really, really old. And um, I, I still remember uh, a couple of baptisms. Um, some of you are on the phone uh, for Jacob and Johnny Seaver on a very memorable Christmas Eve, along with some of their family members. That was just amazing. And what we want to explore together in our time is, well, what is baptism? And, and why should I uh, appreciate it? Why should I promote it um, to other people? Okay, so let's get into it. Um, the passages um, I will read, but as I read, again, you'll be taking notes. So the first note to take is sacrament. So what you have before you is the definition of a sacrament. And I want you to write this down, that a sacrament is the gospel in word and sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper, um, that is um, the gospel. So we're going to be talking about baptism and the Lord's Supper in our next two sessions. Um, so as we get into things, um, what is a sacrament? Number one, it is started by Jesus. So we're going to see Jesus go to John the Baptist and say, you better baptize me. And, um, and, and so he, he started that. He started the Lord's Supper in the upper room. Right before Good Friday, they were celebrating the Passover when he started something new that we still celebrate in the Lord's Supper and something I'm so excited to celebrate with you after your confirmation. So both baptism and the Lord's Supper started by Jesus. Next, God's word is connected to something you can see and taste. And so in um, baptism, what is the thing that you can see or touch? Uh, it's water, isn't it? And in the Lord's Supper, what is it that we see, taste, and touch? It is the bread and the wine. There are earthly elements in these sacraments. What's so neat about that is that if you've ever said, man, I, I wish I could experience God. I, I wish I could see Jesus or have him show up to me. In the sacraments, he does in ways that we feel or, or, or see or taste or touch. It's an experience with God. But the final thing, it is by which God offers forgiveness, new life, and salvation. So what you'll see in baptism is this is what he's using to forgive our sins, uh, to create a new thing in us. It's why parents bring their, their tiny babies so that they can be brought into the spiritual family of God as he brings new spiritual life and makes dead things alive. Um, how wonderful to receive um, forgiveness this way. 
So what is a sacrament? As a review, started by Jesus, went to John the Baptist, was in the upper room, connected to either water or to bread and wine, um, see, taste, and touch. And then finally, a, a summation of this is it increases our faith because it offers forgiveness, new life, and salvation. That is a sacrament. Okay? Well, let's move on. Everyone hanging with me? All right. So what is baptism? And uh, here we want to uh, investigate scripture. Um, this scripture uh, from Mark tells us that it's a washing. And, and this goes back to my Greek bap background. Uh, I went to school to study the Greek, and the Greek word for, for baptism is baptizo. It sounds very similar. And the definition of that word is to sprinkle or to wash or to clean, to immerse. Um, it reminds me of washing dishes. If you've ever washed dishes, you've baptizoed those dishes. You sprinkled them, you washed them, you immersed them, you did something with them. And, and that's what Mark is referencing here. Um, Mark 7, it says, When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many traditions, such as the baptizo, or the washing, of cups, pitchers, and kettles. And so the, the first takeaway of baptism, baptism means to pour, immerse, or sprinkle. Or basically to wash, right? And I don't know who's in charge of the dishes in your household. I know uh, Bella Bloomer is uh, one who's baptizoing quite a bit, uh, but uh, she's washing. And, and this uh, reminds us that uh, you, you can sprinkle water on someone, you can immerse them, both are valid. It doesn't just have to be immersion, it can be just sprinkling when you baptize. Well, Matthew 28 tells us the words of baptism. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so our next point is this. That God's command is we baptize in the name of the triune God. See, if I would baptize children in the name of Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, uh, those are cool people, but it wouldn't be baptism. What we baptize in is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's what makes it valid. You know, it kind of reminds me of my experience as a bank teller. Uh, when I was at the bank, they would send in checks and you had to look at those checks and, and you'd have to investigate them really clearly. But the thing is, if a check wasn't signed, it wasn't worth anything. If the person writing the check didn't put their name attached to it, it had no value, no matter if it was for a million dollars or ten dollars. So also when it comes to baptism, it's only valid when we say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the, the word God attaches to it. All right. Next, in Ephesians, it says this, that God made her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And so what we learn about baptism is this, that water and God's word is for our forgiveness. So, so what does it do? It cleanses us. It reminds me of doing laundry. So I told you that my daughter Bella is our baptizoer. She washes the dishes. My daughter Nadia is the laundrier. There's not a good word for that. But if you've ever used a stain remover, you know, like Shout or OxyClean, you know what it is to have some stains come out completely clean uh, through the wash. And so that is what, again, God is doing with our sins. He's completely washing them clean, no matter how dark the stain of sin was. The summary statement is this, baptism is applying of water by God's command and water connected with God's word. So we apply water, you can sprinkle, you could immerse, um, you, you just have to use water, that's the main thing, but it's connected with God's word, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so uh, one statement, um, I wanted you to think about this. Meg, a teenager, wanted to be baptized by standing in a river instead of standing in front of a baptismal font at church. 
Now, is that an okay way to be baptized, to be baptized in the river? Anyone? No. Yeah. Okay. Whoever said yeah, why is it good? Because Jesus was baptized in a river. Amen. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Can I follow up with another question? Daniel, do you have to be baptized in a river? No. Exactly. Why are some reasons you might want to have it in a church? Anyone? Um, uh, so that you can, um, I have no idea. <laughs> no idea, no worries. Uh, anyone else? Baptized in a church. How about this? So that other people can celebrate with you. One of the things we'll talk about is that it's good for us to remember the grace God gave us in our baptisms. And so when others choose the church, we can all remember the grace of God to us who've been baptized. Um, so it's, it's, it's also good to, to do it in church as well. Uh, but either way is fine. Uh, next, we're going to ask this question. What really happens uh, when we're baptized? And uh, I'm going to read uh, Titus chapter 3. It says, He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So it's talking about God's activity to save us, and it's saying he's making us reborn or renewed. What we know then is that the Holy Spirit is at work in baptism. And um, because of this, we can trust the claim that we're renewed because God is behind it. Now, some claims in this world we can't trust that are true. For example, if you had a toddler tell you he could dunk a basketball, um, you probably shouldn't believe him. I don't think that can happen. Not on a regulation hoop anyway, right? Um, you know, here's a, one probably lifted by a dad, but a toddler doesn't and is not able to dunk a basketball. Great claims. Whereas our God, whatever he claims to do, he does. Like raising the dead, like guiding us through COVID-19, like being with us now. He can do what he's promised to do because he is God. And so the Holy Spirit confirms this activity of baptism. It's a washing of rebirth and renewal. In Ephesians 5, 25 and 26, we talked about a little bit already. It was the reference to the fact that he cleanses us by the washing with water in the word. So he's uh, again, forgiving our sins. The Holy Spirit works through the word connected to the water. So again, the word is necessary. The word is what makes it uh, so special. You know, a great picture of baptism uh, has to do with an Old Testament character named Naaman. Now, Naaman was from a, a foreign country and came to Israel to be healed of leprosy. Now, leprosy was a disease you could die from. It was a skin disease. And he went to a prophet who told him to go wash himself um, in a river. Wash himself in the Jordan River. And, and he was a little offended. He, he didn't think the Jordan River was that great. Um, but as he washed himself in just plain water, uh, he came out and was completely cleansed. And it wasn't really because the Jordan River was so special, but because of what God was doing through that prophet that cleaned him. You know, Naaman is a good picture for what happens to us. We might be dirty and covered with a disease called sin, but as we wash, there's, there's nothing so special about the water, but what God is promising to do to make us clean and healthy on the other side. All right. Summary statement. Um, what happens is that the Holy Spirit is at work in our hearts through the word of God connected with the water used in baptism. You know what, guys? I'm looking at the clock a little bit. Don't worry about the summary statements. If you have the main points, those summary statements are in general um, just the, the same thing. So for the sake of time, we're going to go on to make sure we get through some material. What gifts did the Holy Spirit offer and give me when I was baptized? Or what gifts are ours is another way you can write that down. Um in Acts chapter 2, there's a lot said of baptism. Acts chapter 2, it says, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, 
and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Peter said, repent and be baptized for a, a few things that will get forgiveness. And, and how great to know that. How great to know that all of our sins have been paid for. There, there's not a single sin that you have done or will do that the blood of Jesus won't atone for. Now, that's obviously not giving us a license to go and do whatever we want, but it is a license for a clear conscience to not live in fear and guilt over what you've done. So again, what does God give? He gives forgiveness. Well, what else does God say? Um, in First in Peter, there's this illustration given of baptism and the ark during Noah's ark. And I want you to pay attention. It said, in the days of Noah's, while the ark was being built, um, in it only a few people, eight and all, were saved through water. And then he coordinates it with baptism. He says, and this water symbolizes baptism, which also saves you. Uh, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience. And, and so what we learn is this, that God offered and, and gave deliverance from death and hell. That, that's what he does through baptism. If you think of Noah's Ark, uh, you, you think of um, a time where all that rain came down and, and it was a time where if you weren't in the Ark, you were going to die. But Noah and his family had a safe spot. They, they didn't matter how high the water raised, they were safe in that ark. That's the same with baptism. Apart from the grace of God, we would die and live forever in hell. But because of the grace of God and baptism to forgive us, it's like we're protected in this ark. It's like we're in there right now that, yes, the world might face destruction and, and there might be a bad things going on, but we know we're held safe by God. And we're going to be his forever. Um, summary statements um, are actually more gifts that he's going to offer. Uh, more gifts. Uh, it goes on. And, and now um, we have a passage from Zechariah. And uh, in this passage, um, we hear of uh, Joshua being dressed with filthy clothes and then putting on good clothes. In, in Zechariah, it says, Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. And the angel uh, who stood there said, Take off the filthy clothes. And then said to Joshua, See, I've taken away your sin, and I will put rich garments on you. And, and then he said, Put a clean turban on his head. And they put, put a clean clothes and a turban on his head while the angel stood by. Uh, you, you do this every day, don't you? You take off dirty clothes and you put new ones on. And in baptism, that's what God does. He delivers us from the devil. He delivers us from the stench of sin. You know, it, it, it's kind of like uh, uh, the devil wants to accuse us. The devil is always trying to get us to live in fear and guilt and shame. He's like a lawyer pointing at you. You did it. You should die. What God says through baptism is innocent. To be justified means to be declared not guilty. And that's what you are through baptism. So you're defended by God. You're wearing clean clothes. Your sin has been removed. Your dirt has been removed. Your accusations have been removed all through baptism. How awesome. A final gift. It says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So what is this gift? Eternal life. And some of you may know, uh, this is why I'm so excited uh, to be in church with you and to be a pastor, because what we do in a gathering is going to culminate for an eternal party in heaven. Some of you probably know that pastor means party animal. I just know where the true party is. It's not here. It's in heaven someday. Um, and, and that's the place where he's making all things new, where again, there's no more sickness. There's no more pain or mourning. No, it's going to be perfect forever with our great God. And that's a gift he gives to us through baptism. Again, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, will go to heaven. How awesome. All right. There's a picture of heaven. 
the summary statement. You don't have to write it down again for the sake of time, but uh, hear this. God gave me forgiveness of sins, deliverance from death and the devil, and eternal life all through baptism. All right. Vocabulary, um, if you want to write down, institute just means to begin or start. A sacrament. Um, we already covered that in your early notes, so you don't have to take that. But again, a sacrament, again, has three parts. Started by Jesus, offers an earthly element like bread and wine, and then gives forgiveness of sins or increases faith. Those are the three. A means is by uh, how something is done. Uh, like to hit a baseball, you need the means of a baseball bat. And, uh, and so means of grace just mean the, the means that the Spirit is using to increase our faith. Um, and he uses baptism and the Lord's Supper. Those are his means uh, to increase our faith. I thought I'd pause. Any questions? Everyone uh, hanging on there with me? Doing all right? Yep. yep. I feel perfectly normal. Sweet. That's amazing. Pretty good. Yeah. All right. Am I going too fast or too slow? You're good. Yeah, you're pretty good. good. All right. For sure. Cool, cool. All right. Well, let's uh, move on to the next. A big question I get um, is who are we to baptize? And, and, and a lot of people say, you know what, should we really baptize babies, Pastor? Should we really baptize babies? And they'll tell me, hey, what passage tells you to baptize babies? And you know what, I could probably be pretty snarky if I wanted to. Because I could ask him, well, what, ba what, what passage says to baptize senior citizens? Or what passage tells to baptize teenagers? Or what passage says to baptize 30-year-olds? The Bible is very clear. The Bible just says baptize all. Here again, what it says in Matthew 28. Jesus told us, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, I'm pretty brilliant, and I've investigated what all means. Do you know what all means? All. all. Yeah, I know. It's brilliant. Yeah, you've learned a lot today. <laughs> Somebody asked you what the word means to say the word. Yeah, uh-huh. The word means the word. And, and so who are we to baptize? Uh, it's very apparent. All. We should baptize all. Because all means all. It, it's kind of like if I said we're all going to um, the Cubs game when it opens again. Uh, who does that exclude? No, not White Sox fans. If I said all, it means they can come. <laughs> all means all. So when Jesus is telling us baptize all nations, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. It's very clear he means kids as well. Or consider Acts 2.38, a big passage over baptism. Uh, Acts 2, here's Peter, what he said. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So when, when Peter is preaching, he is talking to a, a big crowd, a crowd that is gathered for what we call Pentecost, and there's thousands of people uh, of all different ages. Um, so what we know is that he's talking to mostly adults, um, and, and so adults are included, but, but it goes on, and look what he also says just after this. He says, the promise is for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And so he references children in the command of be baptized every one of you. And so what we know is that the promise is also for children. Here's what we also know about children. Are they sinful? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Have you ever been around a toddler who didn't want to share? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or an infant screaming to get their way? Yeah. Yeah. Or you've ever had a sibling and you, you end up fighting with your sibling? What's up with that? Yeah, we, we got sin, don't we? But, you know, it's also really cool is that little ones can believe. In fact, that's why in confirmation we have you confess your faith, not to scare you, but because your faith is just as important as my faith. 
And when we hear how God is working in your life, your soul, it encourages our soul. And in fact, one of my favorite things to do is to go to a chapel where I hear little kids singing. Right? Have you ever heard little kids singing about God? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just an awesome representation that they are souls, that they are spiritual creatures who not only have the need for forgiveness, but can also believe in a great way. The spirit is taking hold of them no matter the age. Um, so we're supposed to baptize all people. Now, what's really interesting, do you know that you can baptize? Do you know that? You can. Uh, all you take is water and you say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's a valid baptism because baptism is not up to the person baptizing. That's not the power. I'm not the power. It's up to God. But one reason that we usually baptize in the context of church is, is so that I can teach them more about what baptism is and also guide them uh, through the rest of their lives. Because we shouldn't believe that if we're just baptized or confirmed for that matter, that we're good to go. Um, the faith that is created is an ongoing thing. If you don't continue to feed your faith, um, no matter if you've been baptized, that faith can die. Um, so why we do it in the church is so that hopefully they can walk with God even after their baptism, learn more and more and more about the wonder of who he is. Okay? All right. Uh, here's a, a, a question that sometimes I get. Uh, what do you think? Agree or disagree? Children should have a choice on whether or not they want to be baptized. So parents should wait until their children are old enough to decide rather than forcing them to be baptized. What do you think? My, my brain has just gotten bigger. Yeah. It's a hard one, isn't it? Uh, Owen, what do you think? I probably agree with it. All right. Yeah, I disagree. Honestly, I agree. Yeah, I, dis I disagree. Okay, Jacob, why do you disagree? Because it doesn't matter, matter if you're baptized or not, because it won't have any effect on your life if you didn't want to be baptized. Ah, that's a good clarification point. Do you know that the power of God works regardless of your decision? In fact, in Ephesians 2, it says that we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Can a dead thing decide to come to God? What do you think? No. Everything possible. Not for a dead thing. And so it goes on to say in Ephesians that he made us alive um, through his love, that he's the one that made us alive. So a, a, a child, a baby is dead spiritually in their sins. What God does is he brings them to life. And so why should you baptize children? Because I think you should before they have a choice is that you want to make them alive in Christ and show them the goodness of God. It's kind of like why I want to share a happy meal with my child. You know, I want to share a happy meal with my child because a happy meal is fun and good. Not always healthy, but it's fun and good. And so what God has in baptism is even better. Why would I neglect giving my child something that is so superiorly good for them? He's going to make them alive in Christ through this. Now, what will happen as people grow older is they will make a choice. In fact, you know, right now, access class is so that when you get confirmed, you can say, I am choosing to follow Jesus. And that's a very natural part of your faith life. You should choose to follow Jesus. But in the meantime, parents have a responsibility to teach their children and give their children the good things of God, even before they can decide for themselves. Any questions? No, I'm good. Okay, good discussion. All right. All right. Here we go. It's everyone's favorite time. It's time for What's Wrong With That Pop Song. The Today's selection is from The weekend. Now, let me uh, give a premise for why we do this. I do this so that you learn the, the value of discernment. Because um, you're going to hear a lot of different messages um, that uh, may or may not be good for you. Right? Does that make sense? And, uh, and so we want to discern uh, what is good and what is potentially not as good. And so today's uh, selection, the weekend, it goes like this. Uh, I look around, Sin City's cold and empty. No one's around to judge me. 
What's wrong with that pop song? Uh, uh. Someone I, is there to judge. Yeah, it's still there. They are wrong. They are wrong. They are not big brain. <laughs> they don't have a big brain. All right. Thank you, Johnny. Who else? Um, there's nobody there for, well, there is somebody there to judge them still. Who is that? Jesus. God. God. Exactly. And, and that's a good point that we need to consider. You might have some time alone in the coming weeks and days. And you might say, well, when I'm alone, I can do whatevs because just me. But we should always know that God is watching and we want to honor God no matter um, if we're alone or by a lot of people. In fact, integrity is uh, who you are when no one's looking. And, and to be that light, even when no one's looking, to, to be that good person, that representative of Jesus, even when no one's looking. So the weekend might think he can do whatever he wants because no one's there. Not so for us in Christ. All right. So we are moving on to our second lesson. We are at that halfway point. We are going into how baptism changes my life. How baptism changes my life. Did my screen just get a lot brighter? A little bit. Um, uh, I think yeah. Okay. I didn't notice. Yeah, I think it's because of the. I think it's because of the TV background. All these things I'm learning through technology. All right. Everything. Oh, All right. Crap. Are we good? You ready? Yeah, girl. You in it? Mic. Here we go. So now we're asking what two things does the Holy Spirit do in baptism? What two things? Uh, we hear again uh, a critical passage of baptism from Peter. Uh, listen again to this one. You've heard it already, but it's so good to hear again. Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for, number one, the forgiveness of sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What two things did you hear right there? We receive forgiveness of sins and the Holy Spirit. So what do we have here? Uh, the Holy Spirit gives us the blessings of Jesus. And, and, and forgiveness, with it comes so many other blessings. With it comes the whole kit and caboodle. If your sins are forgiven, it means you have eternal life. If you have eternal life, it means you're part of God's family. If you're part of God's family, it means that you're protected by our Father. If you're protected by your Father, it means that he's going to work out everything for your good. They, they all go together. Um, and so you have the blessings um, that Christ gave you. And so with that, um, baptism is, is kind of like a, a medicine. C can you imagine um, if, if we had the cure for COVID-19? Do you think we would hand it out right now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? If, yeah. if Amazing Love had a stockpile of 100% cure for COVID-19, you think people would want to come? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so, right? Do, do you know and realize we have a better cure? See, people are going to get sick and they're going to die. But we have the cure for death. We have the cure for guilt and sin through Jesus. How wonderful. And how wonderful to receive it through baptism. All right, Colossians 2, what else do we receive? It says, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith, who raised him from the dead. So um, here, what we're getting to is this, that the Holy Spirit gives faith in those blessings. He can assure us that they're really true. You know, uh, it kind of reminds me when people try to convince someone else that, that they really care for them. Now, if you are dating someday when you're 35 and you're trying to convince someone that you love them, what might you do for them? Buy them a Target gift card. Love it. Especially if they're a girl because girls love Target. What else? Card. Another gift card. Take them out. Take them out. 
Love it. I have a Be few nice things. Um, a few things that have worked. Uh, flowers work. Stuffed animals work. Balloons work. At least, at least in my household, those things work to say I love you, and and they convince someone else that really, you know, there is something there. And so, why do I bring this up? The Holy Spirit is going to work through baptism to convince you that God is real. He strengthens your faith. He he renews you in the faith to convince you. He's overcome, that you're forgiven, that you're part of the family. And, and that's what's so great about baptism. He, he, again, is working that conviction in our hearts that we call faith. Um, so the summary that you don't have to write down, but is here. Um, through the word of God and baptism, the Holy Spirit promises spiritual blessings to us and gives us faith to trust in the promise. Got it? All right. What else? What attitude did God work in me when I was baptized? What is a bad attitude in your household? What anything that's, anything that's demoralizing. Demoralizing? Yeah, I'm sure I'm running, running that's a bad attitude. Yeah. The desk alert. Yeah. yeah. I'm hearing a lot of good ones. You know what? Uh, in the Bloomer household, we don't like crabbiness. It's a bad attitude, right? Crabbiness is not great. Be great. It's the worst attitude. It is bad. Crabbiness. Yep. And so are there bad uh, spiritual attitudes? Absolutely. Because of our sinful nature, we have a whole bunch. Um, in fact, in Romans, it describes some of these attitudes. Um, it says, we died to sin. How can we live in it anymore? Don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? So we're therefore baptized, uh, we're therefore buried with him through baptism into death. And, and then he goes on to say, so in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin. What, what God is reminding us of um, is that uh, we want to die and be buried to sin. Die to sin. Basically, it means we don't want to sin anymore. To, to continue in sin would be having a very bad attitude. And so God changed our attitude and he made us hate sin. And so maybe there's a part of you that says, I hate it when people are mean. And I hate it when people make fun of others. And I hate it when others are disrespectful. And you got that attitude, that hating of sin because of faith, because of baptism. It kind of reminds me of eating something so much you got sick off of it. Um, yeah. Water. Yeah. Water is not it, but Owen, did you have something that you ate so much you got sick off of it? Um, not that I can think of, but probably something. Got it. The number one thing that does that is Skittles. Skittles. Ooh, I like Skittles. But you know what made me sick um, were bell peppers. If you've ever been to Olive Garden, had the salad and they have the little peppers or Papa John's, they have those peppers. And, and I, I love those peppers so much that one day I ate like a whole jar of them. And that was not smart because I ate so many, I got sick off of them. And once you get sick off of a food, after I got sick, do you think I wanted to eat those bell peppers the next day? No, no. not at all. It took me years to recover. I can eat them now, but it was a good decade before I wanted another one of them. <laughs> right? When, when we've been baptized and God changes our mind, he's basically uh, giving us this like, oh, why would I want to do that? Why, why would I want to be mean to someone? I don't get it. Why, why would I want to steal something that isn't mine? Why? Why? Ugh. That's, that's good. He changes our attitude. Well, Romans goes on to say, um, so we were baptized into his death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we might live a new life. And a life that we live, we live to God. So, so the new life is this. Um, I'm, I'm raised with Christ. And, and, and so what it means um, is, is kind of this drastic before and after. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen those, you know, diet commercials where before, you know, they were out of shape and then they're in shape. And, um, yeah. and the drastic transformations, right? Um, well, well, God says even more drastic than you getting six-pack abs um, is what I did in Christ Jesus. What I do uh, to make you holy and righteous and doing good things for the kingdom, which I empower you to do. Um, he, he gives us new life. 
So um, in baptism, I've died and been raised with Christ. That is, God gave me the desire to do away with sinful thoughts and actions and to live a new life. How great, how wonderful. All right. Um, next, what does my baptism remind me to do every day? Sorry for the typo. It's not remid. What does my baptism remind me to do every day? Look at what Ephesians says. It says, you are taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted, and to put on the new self created to be like God in righteousness and holiness. So we put off something and we put on something. And, um, and so we put off the old self, which is sin and sinful desires. We put on the new self, uh, which is the desires that please God. And, and we do that all the time with clothes. I think we've talked about that. If you've gotten some muddy clothes going on, um, if you did grass stains or you had a gym class where you got all sweaty, uh, you're going to put those clothes away and you're not going to put them back on, right? Hopefully before they're washed. Um, and what God says is, I don't want you wearing that. I want you to put on your, your best. Um, I don't know if you remember, you know, ever dressing up for something. Uh, maybe you've dressed up for, you know, a prom, a dance, a funeral. Um, uh, maybe you've dressed up for church a time or two. Um, anyone ever dress up for Easter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's how God wants us to, to live, not just look. He says, I want you to be wearing things like compassion and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. Um, these things will make you look good um, to the world, um, even more than an Easter hat, which is cool. I grew up in an age where some gals would wear really awesome Easter hats. I think that age is passing, but um, God is saying better than an Easter hat is looking and living good. All right. Um, what else does it remind me to do every day? Um, in Romans, it says we died to sin, so we shouldn't live in it anymore. So don't let sin reign in your moral body that you do its evil desires. Don't offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness. Um, so we, we shouldn't, you know, offer the parts of our body as wicked instruments. How can I sin with my eyes? Look at someone. Okay. With their, with your eyes. Yeah. I, wait, that doesn't make sense though. Well, we, we could look at someone um, uh, and, 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 and kind of in a demeaning way, we could condescend as if we're better. You ever have someone give you a condescending look like, who do you think you are? If they did, I wouldn't have noticed it. All right. Well, we're working yeah. on that. We will, we will learn that. I can train you. Uh, anyway. Um, or what else can we do with our eyes? Uh, unfortunately, we can lust with our eyes, can't we? We got to be careful uh, what we're viewing online or how we're looking at the opposite sex, right? What about with our mouth? How could we sin with our mouth? Swearing. Swearing, absolutely. Yep. Uh, what about with our ears? How could we sin with our ears? Eavesdropping. Eavesdropping, gossiping, yep, yep. <laughs> not listen to. Not listening to those you're supposed to listen to? Uh-huh, uh-huh. What about with your hands? How can you sin with your hands? Hitting someone, stealing something, right? Um, not lifting them to work when mom or dad says to help out. Yep. Um, so what does God say? He says, don't let sin rule in our hearts because the major place that leads to sin in the eyes and ears and mouth and hands is our heart. If our heart isn't right, we need to again um, seek the Lord. Now, how do we guard our hearts? You have to be careful, especially during the quarantine, everything that you're taking in. If only you're taking in junk from YouTube and junk from Netflix and, and you're only taking in junk, your heart will be filled with junk and it'll come out with your eyes and your mouth and your ears and your hands. So you gotta be careful what your heart lets in. And that's why it's good to hear the word. It's good to read your Bible during this time. It's good to watch Christian content online or tune into Access Class. Um, we, we need to keep our hearts pure. Uh, next, uh, Romans says, rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. Offer the parts of your body as instruments of righteousness. Um, so now I have another question. How do I do right with my eyes? 
Well, I could read the word of God, couldn't I? Watch oh, yeah. a sermon. How do I do right with my mouth? You have a good shirt today. Thanks. Yeah, compliment, right? Encouragement. The, the power of words, right? To, to say the right things, to thank our mom and dad, perhaps, um, when appropriate. Um, how can I do right with my hands? Pat on the back. Yeah, pat someone on the yeah, back. Good job. Did I hear give them a hug? Yeah, that's good. Um, do pick, you, up pick up stuff, do your chores. Yep, absolutely. Um, so what God is saying to us is this, um, to offer myself uh, to serve God. Um, and, and how great that is to, to serve him alone. And so um, this was sin being our master at one point. But God says when we're in him, we're going to produce fruit. We're going to use eyes, ears, mouth, nose. We're, we're going to do that to produce the righteous fruit that gives him glory in this world. And so summary statement, my baptism reminds me to put off the old sinful way of living and put on a new holy way of living. All right. Um, a good way um, to live your life is to remember your baptism regularly. And one way you can do that is to wake up each day and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm a baptized and loved child of God. And by saying that, we're remembering that before we could choose him, he chose us. When we were a dead thing, he made us alive. And how wonderful that is. In fact, um, I, I may have mentioned this at the beginning, but one of the most memorable um, baptisms that we've had is when I went to the Seaver household. Uh, there they are in the same house. And we went over on a Christmas Eve and uh, there were six baptisms. Uh, John and Jacob and, and some of his family members uh, got baptized. And uh, how wonderful uh, to, again, experience the grace of God in that moment. Um, how wonderful uh, now to receive the grace of God as we learn the word. Um, these are things to, to remember, to celebrate um, for the goodness of God. All right. Vocabulary. Um, I'm going to really shorten these vocab words for you. Okay. So there's going to be a big paragraph and I'm going to just give you a, a phrase. So when it comes to our old self, I just want you to put our sinful self, sinful self. But what it means is the part of us that passed on the, a conception that makes us sinners through and through. Uh, we rub, rebel against God. The new self, just write the new person in Christ. The new person in Christ. Um, and it says, It's the part that was created in baptism through faith that the Holy Spirit worked. It longs to do what is right, empowered by God's love and the message of Jesus. Contrition, sorrow over sin. That you feel bad that you've sinned against God. That's what contrition is. Sorrow over sin. And repentance, asking God to forgive. Asking God to forgive and trusting that he has. Asking God to forgive, trusting that he has. You guys got it? What's the final word? Uh, the bottom word is repentance. Uh, trusting that God forgives, believing that he has. All right. So now we have to ask, how do I put off the old self and put on the new? How does this happen? Well, Psalm 51 says, Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you're proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. What can we bring to God as a gift? An offering. Yeah, so we could bring money, right? This passage says that, you know what's even better than money? You can bring your heart. And one of the ways we do that is we, we are contrite. We are sorrowful for our sins. You know, soon it will be Good Friday. And Good Friday is the day we commemorate Jesus' death. And, and there's a lot of sadness, rightly so, on that day. Because that's the day when we see what our sins deserved. Our sins deserve the worst of the worst for God's anger to be put out on us. 
but it was put out on Jesus instead. And so if you want to, again, offer God something good, offer him the sorrow you have over sin. And, and again, that sorrow then hopefully leads you away from that sin, um, empowered by the Spirit. But it's not just sorrow. It, it goes on. And, and, and don't just bring your sorrow. Uh, Psalm 52 or 32 says, I acknowledge my sin and you did cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So, so even more important is understanding that God forgives all my sins. That's so important. Because otherwise, if we just do the first part feeling sorry, but don't believe he's forgiven, it's the difference between Peter and Judas. Do you guys know what sin Judas was known for doing? Betraying Jesus. Betraying Jesus, exactly. But he didn't, he felt sorry, but he didn't believe he could be forgiven. And so what did he do, Daniel? Uh, he hung himself. Correct. Because he didn't trust he could be forgiven. Peter, what did he do wrong? What did Peter he do did, wrong? He denied, denied denying knowing Jesus. He denied Jesus. But he was reinstated. And Jesus told him three times, you know, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. And because he trusted he was forgiven, he went on to lead the Christian church to, to go from being a coward to courageous and to be a leader in God's hands uh, because of trust and forgiveness. So you, you, need, you need to bring your sorrow, and that might last for a little bit, but you need to get to the point where you trust you're forgiven. God wants you to live at peace. God wants you to know you are loved and forgiven. Okay? Finally, Romans 6, 17 and 18 says, But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, which you wholeheartedly obeyed from the form of teaching you were entrusted, you've been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. So what did God do? Uh, he helps us to put on the new self out of thanks freed us from slavery to sin, to be slaves of righteousness. It, it kind of reminds me of one of my favorite stories uh, comes from the day of slavery. And I think I've told you this one of a slave on an auction block. And, and, and the slave was seeing their family being sold and wondering what's going to happen to, to them. And finally, the highest bid was given and, and, and goes to the new master. And the master says something that is surprising. The master says, I bought you to set you free. And you think of how wonderful that must have felt and wonderful to hear. And the slave says in response, if you did that, sir, can I serve you with the rest of my life? Isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus comes and he says, you know what? I bought you to set you free from all the things that were going to hurt you and, and lead you to a worse place. And what we say in response, Lord, if you're that good, can I serve you? What do you want? And by the way, his demands are really good too. You know what he wants? Could you just love people? Could you just love that? That would sum up what my household rules are. Love me, love others. That's, that's really good. So he set us free from slavery to, to, to sin. And now we, by our own volition, become slaves of righteousness. So I put off the old self by contrition or repentance. I put on the new self out of thanks to God. All right. So for next time, um, and I, I, uh, I know our next time is actually uh, laser tag. Um, I am hoping, I am hoping that we can play laser tag on the eighth of April. Um, I don't know for sure. Okay. Um, so I don't know for sure. Uh, I can't control that. Um, I hope things are open by that time, but I'll definitely let everyone know. Um, now, if you're getting confirmed, um, you should have received your final assignment. And at this point, um, I want you to be writing that rough draft. You, you should have picked uh, your topic. And now I want you to be writing 400 to 500 year words because you're going to email me that uh, by the 8th. So if you have some extra time right now, uh, you can be writing your essay, chosen your topic, and email me 400 to 500 words by April 8th. Any questions uh, on the project right now? No, I think I'm good. 
Okay. Uh, Daniel, you, you, no you're, idea. you're confirmed next year, right, Daniel? Yeah, next year, not this year. Right, right, right. I'm next year too. Okay, very good. Yeah, very good. Sarah, do you know your topic? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do, um, the favorite Bible verse and why. Awesome. Awesome. Great choice. Um, so yeah, you should have my email, uh, where to send it, um, as well in, in the handout. Um, yeah. okay. And then for everyone else, uh, you're going to memorize, uh, for the next time we meet, which will again be after laser tag, uh, the, the petitions. So remember the memory work was the second and third petitions that, that handout I gave you. Uh, so come back having that memorized. Uh, the reason I picked those petitions is they are, a little harder to discern, you know, your kingdom, your will. And so hopefully they'll help you remember those harder ones uh, when you are um, praying the Lord's Prayer. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, any other questions before I sign off here? I got none. <laughs> yeah. Did this work uh, okay, bad, good? What do you think? Yeah. Is that all right? All right. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, and feel free to give feedback through email or anything or through your parents of how to make this better because I don't know how often we'll have to use this or not. Um, so, so feel free. Um, but now as we do, let's close with a blessing. Are you ready for the blessing? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may it be with us. Amen. Hey, so great to have you online today. Take care. Um, God bless. Mm -hmm.